realize that the audience members please turn off all cellular devices. Videos and pictures are okay, but please no flash. Everyone has worked so hard on this play and we hope you enjoy it, because tonight's performance is going to be a scream. And without further ado, we present to you, sorry, wrong number. Murray Hill for zero zero nine eight now for the past three quarters of an hour. The line is always good. We hide. Murray Hill for zero zero nine eight. What do you want, please? I don't see what could be taking all this time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight. I'm all alone in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. We Murray Hill for zero zero nine eight. Hello. Hello? 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 George? Yes, sir. Heard from our client. He says the coach is clear for tonight. Oh, hello! What number is this, please? Where are you now? In a phone booth. All right, then. You know the address. At 11 o'clock, the patrolman goes around 2nd Avenue for a beer. Make sure all the lights downstairs are out. Only one light should be visible from the street. At 11.15, a train passes by on the bridge. It makes a sound in case her window is open, and she should scream. Oh, hello, what number is this, please? Okay, I understand. Yeah, but uh, remember, as little blood as possible. Brian doesn't wish to make it look like, uh, you know, make her suffer long. And I focus sir? Yeah, I guess an knife will be okay. But remember, remove the rings, bracelets, and jewelry from, you know, the room. Our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. Okay, I get it. Oh, no! Operator, I, I've just been cut off! What number are you calling that? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill. 40098. But it wasn't. Some wires must have been crossed and I was cutting to the wrong number. And I just heard the most dreadful thing. Uh, a murder. Oh, oh Aubrey, you'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quite understand. Oh, I know it was the wrong number. And I know business listening. But these two men, they're called leaded fiends. And they're going to murder someone. What number were you calling, madam? That doesn't matter. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. No doubt. Oh, why are you so stupid? Look, it's obviously a case of some sort of slip to the figure. I told you, dot Murray Hill, 40098. You dialed it, but your fingers must have slipped and now cut it to a wrong number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply failed to see why you couldn't make the same sort of mistake Again, on purpose. Why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill for 0098 in the same character way. The Murray Hill for 0098? I'll show you Thank you. I'm sorry, Murray Hill for 0098. Operator. Operator. Yes, madam? You didn't try to get that wrong number at all.
depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have by now. That was at least five minutes ago. They did not seem like the sort of people to make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. Now, what is your name, Adam? Miss Stevenson. Albert Smith Stevenson. And what is your telephone number? Plaza 42295. But if you want to see all this time, what is your reason for wanting this call traced? My reason? Well, for heaven's sake, isn't it obvious? I over here two men. They're killers. They're going to murder someone. Why? It's a matter of the police. Have you told the police? No. How could I? Did they can just check into a private call purely as a private individual? Yes. But meanwhile, well, Mrs. Stevenson, I seriously doubt whether we can just check with you at this time, just on your say-so as a private individual. We have to have something more official. You mean to tell me that I can't report a murder without getting tired of all this red tape? Why, perfectly idiotic. All right, then. I'll call the police. Call, please. The police department. Please. Bring the, the police department. Here's the one, Sarge. I ain't have no jelly. So I got your French roll. All right, Sarge. I got ulcers. Why did she make it apple pie? <laughs> police department, precinct 43, Duffy speaking. I ain't have no apple pie either, Sarge. Okay, you can go now. Yeah. Okay, bye. Police Department, this is Miss Stevenson, this is Albert Smith Stevenson, a 53 yard son place. I'm calling to report a murder. Huh? I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard a plan for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. Yes, ma'am? It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their things distinctly. There were two men, and they were going to murder some woman. Yes, ma'am. There was a private patrolman on the street. I was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And some third man, a, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. Why? It's a nerve me directly. And I'm not and I'm not well. And when was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, you can't do something you do understand. What is your name, ma'am? Albert Smith Stevenson. And um, what is your address, ma'am? Plaza 42295. That's near the Bridge. The Pizza Burglar, you know. And we have a private patrol patrolman on our street in Second Avenue. And what uh, what was that number you were calling, ma'am? Murray Hill, 40098. It's my husband's office. I was calling to tell him to come home. I hate, I'm all alone here in the house. And I hate to be alone, even though my husband says I'm perfectly fine as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, there's uh, nothing for you to worry about. We're checking with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call if the parties had already stopped talking. I wanted to take care of that. Oh, yes? Personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and direct than just check the call. What good is checking the calls if they've already stopped talking? By the time you track it down, they'll already committed a murder. We'll take care of it, lady. Don't worry. I said the whole thing calls for search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near brave. And I'm not far from Second Avenue. And I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder is going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? I don't know. The coincidence is so terrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. Second Avenue is 
is a very long street, ma'am. And do you happen to know how many bridges there are in New York alone? Not to mention Queens, Staten Island, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. And how do you know there isn't some little house out on some little Second Avenue on Staten Island that you've never, ever heard of? How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? Why, I heard it on the New York Diet System. How do you know it wasn't a long distance call you overheard? Telephones are a funny thing, lady. Look, supposing you hadn't broken in on that call, supposing you had got your husband the way you always do, would this murder have made any difference to you then? I, I suppose not. But a lot. Mm -hmm. it's so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are committed in this city every day, ma'am. If we could do something to stop them, we would. But who sure. like this that is so vague isn't much help to us than no clue at all. Surely. Unless you have a reason of thinking that this call is phony and somebody might be trying to murder you. Me! Why would anybody? I'm alone all day and night. The only people I see is my maid, Eloise. She's a big 200 pounder. She's too lazy to bring my breakfast tray. <laughs> and the only other person my husband, Albert, he adores me, waits on me hand and foot. He scares me left my side ever since I took sick 12 years ago. Well, then there's nothing for you to worry about, is there? Now, if you'll just leave the rest of this to us. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 o'clock. Listen, lady, I said we'd take care of you. Will you send out spots and warn your radar cars to watch out, especially Lady, I said we take care of it. Just now I've got a couple of matters here on my desk that require my immediate. Oh, idiot! <laughs> Why did I do that? Now who's thinking I'm a fool? Oh, why is this Elmer? Not possible? 
And why, may I ask? This is the system is automatic, madam. If someone's trying to dial your number, there's no way to check whether the call is coming through the system or not. Unless the person is trying to reach you complains to his particular office. <coughs> well, of all the stupid, complicated, and meanwhile, I'm about to sit here, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I'll check it you, madam. Check it. Check it. That's all anybody can do. Well, stupid, idiotic. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> And 
what is your name, Adam? It's Philip. And when do you expect her in? I really don't know, madam. She went to have to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not at 11 yet. Oh no, my clock must have stopped. I thought it was running down. And please, what is the time? Just 14 minutes past 11. What's that? What was what, madam? That, that click in my own telephone as if someone had lifted the receiver off the extension phone downstairs. I didn't hear anything, madam. Now, about this. But I did. There's someone in the kitchen. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with us. I won't pick it up. I'll be quiet. And they'll think. Oh, what if I don't call someone now? There'll be no time. Quick, operator, I need help.
men and women who are guided by our amazing artistic director, Ms. Marissa Grasson. Helping out with hair and makeup were Kennedy Patsy, Emma Wood, Gabrielle Carroll, and Amanda Williams. Also helping everyone look good and sound good were our lights and sound technicians, Solomon and Elena. We would also like to thank our director, Ms. Catherine Solomon, and especially thank the head of the drama department, Asha Lynch.